Hi, my name is David and I'm from Electric Teaching and this is going to be a calculus problem where we're going to do some optimization. In this case we want to find the maximum volume for an open top box made from a single sheet. So this, this sheet of paper or this uh, cardboard box basically, think of it that way, we're going to make a little box made out of cardboard. We're going to cut out the corners here. We're going to cut out the corners and each of the corners is an unknown length and we're going to try to figure out what length that we need to cut out here to maximize the volume. To give you a visual, if we cut out the corners and then fold up the flaps, we would have a rectangular prism, in this case an open top box, an open top box, where the heights, where the heights will be the X length that we cut out connected right here. So if you visualize these folded up, it would look something like this. Now in this case, what we're doing here is, is what we're trying to figure out is, is if we cut out a lot, we would have basically a tall, thin, a tall, thin box that was open. And if we cut out very little, we would have more like this one, which is flat and it's supposed to be a square bottom there, square base. So just to give you an idea. So which one or what volume, what, what, what X should we cut out? How much should we cut out to maximize this volume? So if you do this and we start with a 24 inch, 24 inch by 24 inch, so a 24 square inch piece of paper or cardboard, Let's take a look at what we have. We're going to have a volume. We're going to have a volume that has the dimensions of square bottom, a square bottom which is 24 originally, 24 originally, but I just subtracted an x off here and an x off from this side. So that we're going to have 24 minus 2, excuse me, minus 2x, minus 2x. Let me correct that real quick. So we're going to have a 24 minus 2x um, uh, base squared, and volume is the base area stacked up, and as we want to learn that in calculus, um, we want to stack up the base area, so the volumes is three dimensions multiplied. Your base area, so there's two dimensions, times x. Now we're going to multiply times x. So with this problem, we have a volume with an unknown x that we want to cut out to make the biggest box, the biggest box. So to do this, you have to think of this as basically a cubic problem. And a cubic problem will have a, a relative min and max often. And what we're going to try to find is try to find that specific maximum. You can see this is going to be a cubic problem because we're going to square this out and then times another x. And don't forget, many cubics will tend to look like this. So we're trying to figure out exactly where this point is to maximize the volume within the domain that we have of cutting out only 24 inches. And that can be considered part of your domain, is that you can't cut out more than what you have. So let's take a look at the derivative. I'm going to say that the v prime, or dv by dt, as a lot of people will say, okay, or a lot of books will say, the derivative of the volume, okay, based on this x. I'm not going to expand this out. I'm going to use the product rule with the chain rule on the square. I think it's a lot easier, especially when it comes to getting the problem down to a factored form. So what we want to do is not expand this. It'll take a while to expand it. I'll have to grab a calculator for 24 squared or sit there and multiply out 24 times 24. And there'll be some computations here that I don't want to deal with that I can avoid easily if I just think of this as a product and chain rule moment. So we're going to do f g prime times g f prime. So f f g prime. Whoops, that x didn't come out very nice. Hang on a second. Sometimes this board is very sensitive. So we're going to do that again. It's 24 minus 2x, which is my f function squared, okay, times g prime, so times the derivative of x, which is 1, plus g x f prime. And here's where I'm going to use the chain rule. So I'm going to see the outside function as a square. So I'm going to look at it as an outside function as a square. So you multiply by 2. 
and then you're going to reduce it by one and keep the inside. That's very important. A lot of people forget to keep the inside. So I'm going to keep the inside of 24 minus 2x. Okay, times the derivative of the inside, which is a negative 2. So that is times the derivative of the inside. So that is what the chain rule looks like on that simple little quadratic term, quadratic expression. All right, now when it comes to finding out the max volume, we need to know what makes zero or what x value will kick out zero for the derivative because that indicates the flat spot. That's when the slope changes zero and gives us a maximum right here. So what I'm going to do, instead of multiplying all this out and collecting like terms, which people tend to do, they tend to just dive into it, and what you want to do is you have to realize you want it in factored form. So I see two big terms here. I see two big terms here that have a 24 minus 2x in each one. So I'm going to factor out the 24 minus 2x. That'll make it a lot easier. So just like you would factor out a, a, like a number 2 or an x value or anything else that you factored out many times in pre-calculus, think of it as just factoring out this big binomial. So factor that out. What is left in the first term? A single 24 minus 2x, because you factored one of them out, or divided one of them out. That x is hard to write with the sensitivity of the pen. Sorry about that. There we go. Got to be a little more uh, patient, I think. All right, and if we factor it out over here, what's going to be left? We got an x multiplied times a 2 times a negative 2. So we have a negative 4x, a negative 4x. I could factor out a 2 from here. I could factor out some numbers from here. But let's not forget, we're not trying to demonstrate the beautiful algebra. That's what we did in advanced algebra and pre-calculus. We're trying to find the solution of the problem here. And if you're taking an AP exam and you got to this point, this is all you need to do to prove what makes zero. Easily from here we can see that a 12 makes zero and a 4 makes zero. If those x values, if those x values are 12 and 4, then this would have the derivative of zero. So with 12, let's look at 12. With 12, if I actually look at what the dimensions would be for 12, well, that'd be 24 minus 2 times 12. I'm looking at a 0 by 0 base. So this must be the smallest volume that is represented, represented on the cubic curve of this point, the smallest volume. That's where 12 is. At 4, I'm going to have the dimensions of 4 high. That'll be the, the height. It would be 4 by, 4 by, just do these little by terms, 4 by, and then what would the base be? The base would be, put a 4 into the x's, so you're taking away 8, and so it's going to be by 16, and then by 16. So that will be the dimensions of the box to get the maximum volume. And notice how clean the algebra is. Too many times you'll be instructed to multiply all this out, and it will be take three or four extra lines and lots of extra calculations. And we have to remember that we're just trying to figure out what makes zero here. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that I have helped.